So let's step forward into the future, 20 or 30 years. And we're thinking now about electric vehicles, EVs, whether you can tune them and modify them and really looking at what your options are when it comes to upgrading your electric vehicle. So it's a topic that for many of us, it's in the distant future. For some of us, we've already got electric vehicles and we're just looking for more performance. So there's areas really that are common to the conventional fueled cars that we're driving now. But there's also a whole raft of different opportunities that we get to modify and upgrade an electric vehicle. So if only we had the time machine. Actually, we do. This DeLorean looks perfect. It's all fueled up and ready to go. So let's wind the clock forward and jump 30 years into the future and see what mods will be doing. <laughs> That doesn't look right. I think I've gone in the wrong direction 30 years. Let's just adjust this and get ourselves back to where we wanted to be in the future. So here we are in the future. It's a brave new world. So let's have a look at EV tuning and what we can do to electric vehicles in order to raise the power output of them. And this video, we're just gonna look at some of the areas that you can focus on in terms of getting more performance. So in an electric vehicle, the computer that controls everything inside is generally referred to as the car management computer. There's gonna be other names devised by different manufacturers for this device, but essentially we're looking at the brain that's controlling all of the output from the batteries, the motors themselves and the way that power is distributed to those motors. So common components that electric vehicles share with conventional fueled cars that still follow very, very similar upgrade routes is generally the suspension system. You've generally got a shock absorber with a spring and some kind of dampener and the rules of lowering it slightly, firming up the suspension, maybe even changing the alignment of the wheels with the ground to enhance your cornering. They will still apply to electric vehicles. Tire technology has certainly moved on quite a lot when it comes to electric vehicles. So they are designed to muffle the road noise a lot more because your conventional fueled engines will be making more noise than you will get off the road. Electric cars are much more quiet in their operation and you will get a lot of road noise. So the tires are specifically designed to dampen the road noises. So a lot of the EV tires have actually got some kind of sound deadening material embedded in them. And the tread patterns and the designs are also optimized to reduce the amount of road noise that you would otherwise get. They also have to handle fairly substantial amounts of torque. With the electric motors, the torque is delivered in a very different way to the way internal combustion engines would deliver the power to the car. Braking is also something that is common between the different types of cars. Although the limiting factor is always the amount of grip that you get through your tyres, you can improve the braking feel generally by fitting larger capacity brake rotors or brake discs, depending on where you live, you'll have different names for them. And different brake pads can also improve the car's stopping ability. The key really though, for most drivers, is to make sure the brakes are operating effectively for the longest period of time possible. So if you're doing a lot of track work or a lot of heavy driving, you certainly want to beef up the braking system because even electric vehicle braking systems will still suffer from brake fade as those components start to warm up. So this brings me to heat. Now your internal combustion engine has got a whole raft of options for cooling the engine, cooling the oil and keeping those running temperatures down. Now with electric vehicles you still have a problem with heat. The batteries delivering all of that current to those electric motors will get quite hot and will need cooling. So if you can actually cool those batteries and those motors maybe by having some kind of cooling system attached to them, diverting flow of cold air through those components, there's quite a few different ways you can achieve that and I've seen some people just fitting heat sinks to these devices and channeling a little bit of outside air over those heat sinks and that just keeps the temperature down so that can often prevent those safeguards kicking in and allow your electric vehicle to deliver its maximum potential for longer periods of time. So enhancing the cooling of the battery and the cooling of the electric motors can also give you a little bit more leeway to maybe go a little bit more aggressively than what the manufacturers set. So a lot of manufacturers provide cars with two or four motors and the only real difference is the box that you tick on the form when you order the car. Everything else in the car is there ready for the motors to be mounted to. So it's often a case of retrofitting motors. So if you go to a breaker's yard where you can take the motors and fit them to your two motor model to turn it into a four motor model. So for many, that's gonna be a quick upgrade that will still require some adjustment to the CMC just to make it 
realise it's got more power on tap and the way it distributes the power to those motors is quite important in terms of getting that extra performance from your car. There is a controller for the motor which controls the way the current flows into the motor and that also has a big bearing on the power delivery. So it's oscillating a direct current into an alternating current to allow the motor to work. So the frequencies at which that oscillation happens the amount of changes there are per second or per millisecond has a significant effect on the way that torque is delivered and even the efficiency of the motors. So it's the inverter that takes the DC, the direct current from the batteries and converts it into an alternating current. You need the alternating current in order to get the motor to work. So rather than making mechanical mods to most electric vehicles, if you can get into the computer that controls everything, you can reassign parameters that it's working to and force the batteries to deliver more power and force more power to the motors to get more performance. A lot of the tuned EVs that we see currently driving on tracks are little more than factory standard ones with upgraded brakes and suspension and an enhancement to the computer settings within. So in terms of bolting on better electric motors and changing the electronics and changing the batteries, that's not really something that's happening. I wouldn't mind betting that in 20 to 30 years time, as technology moves on, you'll get better battery technology, you'll get better motor technology as well. And you'll have some options where you can go out and buy parts to fit to your EV. So I hope this has been an interesting glimpse into the future. We're gonna go back 30 years to 2023 and we're gonna continue the usual videos we're putting out on here for the regular internal combustion engines and how to improve them and get the most from them. So I'd be really interested to know what your thoughts are on electric vehicles. Can you see yourself driving one? And if so, will it be five years, 10 years, 20 years, or will you always stay with the internal combustion engine? I'm personally a big fan of the internal combustion engine. I personally don't feel that the technology for charging electric vehicles is there yet for me. I do quite large distances from time to time and I certainly don't want to have to keep stopping to regenerate. But if you've got an electric vehicle, please let me know how you get on with it. And if you found some mods or upgrades for your EV, let us know what model it is and what those mods and upgrades are or which companies out there are offering upgrades in your area. So we can pass that information on and hopefully we can be ready for when the bulk of the world catches up and we all start driving electric vehicles. So thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so we will be featuring some more stuff involving electric vehicles in the future but primarily for now we are dealing with the internal combustion engine and really the love of driving the love of motoring and looking at some of the best upgrades and mods that people are doing to what many consider to be future classics so we'll be looking back on this video in 20 to 30 years time just to see if the world has changed as we all anticipated it would or if some other technology has come along and taken over from the electric vehicle so please boot that like button because that really helps us to get out there thanks for watching and i'll see you in this next video